time to meet the men from the ministry. We're off once again for Whiz Round Whitehall with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Those keen executives, Lennox, Brown and Lamb, go to their office each day knowing that many tricky tasks will await them. But their enthusiasm remains undiminished. I seem to be the only one in this office who does any hard work. Ah, well, hard work never killed anyone. But I'm not going to risk being the first victim. (laughs) Well, what are you doing anyway, Tom? We've got to answer all these letters for the Ministry of Social Security. Well, you get on with them while I attend to the essentials. I see the window box needs weeding again. <laughs> Some of these problems aren't easy, one. Listen to this letter from a woman. Hmm? I must have money at once as I've been in bed with the doctor for a week. <laughs> if things don't improve, I shall have to get a new doctor. How can I answer that? Uh, yes. Uh, send her form O-U-R-A-1. O-U-R-A-1? <laughs> oh. Is that the form that says, is your husband a widower, if not state reasons? <laughs> yes, yes, that'll keep her quiet. Morning, gents. It's only me with trickle tart and cups of tea. Ah, well done, Mildred. I'm glad you made tea. Coffee keeps us awake all day. <laughs> oh, and there's an important memo for you. It says, from the desk of Lord Stilton. Why should Lord Stilton's desk be writing to us? Oh, it's the new in phrase. He's written to every senior executive, apparently, in these special top-secret envelopes. What does his memo say, I wonder? It says senior staff have got to try harder. There's been too much slackness and not enough punctuality. What a cheek. And there's another thing. Lord Stilton's memo says civil servants should dress more smartly. You should follow the example set by the permanent undersecretary. Mm, well, I must say, Sir Gregory does dress well. And very quickly, according to his secretary. <laughs> that will do, Mildred. Leave the memo here. Mr. Lamb and I will scrutinise it. I don't blame you. That's all it's fit for. Lord Stilton's got a nerve. He says ministry staff don't keep themselves fit. Most executives have far too many days off sick. Oh, what nonsense. I may have been off quite a bit last winter, but I was always perfectly fit. <laughs> Apart from your usual March flu break. Well, exactly. I mean, if the Lord had intended us to work through the winter, he wouldn't have given us flu in the first place. <laughs> you certainly look after your health, one. If anyone's got a cold, you won't even speak to them on the phone. That is only common sense, and it's important to keep warm. That's why I've got this oil stove by my desk here. Yeah. Oh, yes, I've been meaning to mention that one. Apparently we're forbidden to have oil stoves in offices. They're regarded as a fire risk. Oh, well, rules are made to be broken, too. What if Sir Gregory comes in? I shall put that big cardboard box over the stove and pretend <laughs> it's a new duplicating machine that we haven't unpacked yet. What so... a good idea. Yeah. Uh, which big cardboard box? Well, that one over by the... Oh, glory. Oh, don't say the cleaners have thrown it away. You two, Sir Gregory's coming down the corridor. Sir Gregory? Oh, good grief. He'll see the stove. Uh, Shall I turn it out once? Uh, No time. You need to take the front off. You'll have to hide it. Hide it? But where can I put it? But don't put it anywhere. Just sit on it. What? But Sir Gregory will think it's a stool. Don't sit on it. But it's hot. Hey, uh, don't push me around. And stay there. Now, Sir Gregory sees that stove. I'll tell him it's yours. Now, just sit there quietly. (laughs) Oh, there you are, you two. Oh. Good morning, Sir Gregory. How very nice to see you, sir. I take it you've seen Lord Stilton's manner. I guess indeed, sir. Well, I need hardly tell you that I entirely concur with his views. Yes. We shall both bend over backwards to make the ministry more efficient. There's been too much casual behaviour. Papers aren't moving quickly enough. People are sitting on things that they shouldn't. <laughs> which always leads to trouble. Now, isn't that so, Lamb? <laughs> yes, Sir Gregory. Are you all right, man? You look even stranger than usual. Yes, uh, I'm all right, I think. Well, stop fidgeting. Uh, now, where, where was I? Bending over backwards with Lord Stilton, sir. Uh, <laughs> quite, yes. Uh, now, I look to this office to lead the way in complying with his memo. Cut out all the idleness and sloppiness. Yes, sir. And there'll be no more arriving late in the morning. And yes. I want everyone smartly dressed. Follow my example. 
I have a suit for every day of the week. Really, sir? Is that it? <laughs> oh, be quiet, Lennox Barnett. Are you sure you're all right, Lamb? You look extremely hot and bothered. And your cheeks are very flushed. Well, I... His head's gone purple. <laughs> Do you think he's sickening for something? I think he's sickening for everyone. <laughs> Take no notice of Gregory. He's at a very difficult age. Oh, well, if you say so. <laughs> yeah, and now to the purpose of my visit. Now, this is a very important matter. Miss Murphin, you'd better take notes. Oh, yes, sir. As you know, the government is extremely concerned about Red China. Oh, yes, sir, yes. Red China. Well, I think it'll look very nice with the canteen tables being white. <laughs> oh, give me patience. I'm talking about China the country. Oh. Our next week is Anglo-Chinese Friendship Week. Well, a top figure from the Chinese government is coming here to receive the freedom of the city of London. A Mr. Hu Flung. Who? That's right. No, I don't quite understand, sir. Who is coming here? Correct. Who will receive the freedom of the city? Well, somebody must know. <laughs> the ceremony will take place outside the Tower of London on Monday. Then troops will escort Hu Flung in a triumphal procession to Buckingham Palace. Ah, who flung? Uh, no, just who flung, Lennox Brown. Ah, who flung is his brother. <laughs> who flung is a top man in his country, so the PM wants a top man from our side to meet him at the Chinese embassy and accompany him to the Tower. Naturally, I have been selected for the job. Oh, well, naturally, Sir Gregory. Yes. Yes. Well, you in this office will have a less glamorous task, but nevertheless an important one. You will be responsible for decorating the route of the procession. Uh, decorating the route, sir? Well, you know the sort of thing. Uh, what about bunting along the streets? Well, I don't think I've ever bunted before, sir. Uh, <laughs> Flags, men, banners, oh. that sort of thing. Now, make sure you put up a good show. Yes. No, don't roll your eyes like that, lamb. You look half-baked. I am. I mean, I, I'm sorry, Sir Gregory. I, I can smell burning. Do you notice the smell of burning? Uh, uh, no, Sir Gregory. Well, it's there, all right. You'll get it in the end. <laughs> or am I imagining things? You know, I, I almost thought I saw steam coming from Lamb's ears. I'd better go and have a medicinal brandy. Oh, oh, oh it's agony. Well, he's told Mr. Lamb you can get up now. Here, I just realised what that smell is. Hmm? Roast lamb. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Mildred. I could have ruined my prospects. Oh, don't fuss to. Here's your elevenses, Mr. Lamb. And as Chinese Friendship Week starts today, I brought you some chopsticks to eat your bun with. Oh. Chopsticks? What fun? Well, they're not really chopsticks. They're two of Mum's knitting needles. I wondered why they had a sock attached. <laughs> Never mind, I'll manage somehow. Blimey, look at that rain. It's pouring down. I'd better shut the window. It's lucky we both came in before it started. Mr. Lennox Brown will get drenched if he don't in this. He'll only have himself to blame. He's really pushing his luck being late again after Lord Stilton's memo. I think Mr. Lennox Brown's getting lazier than ever. I think he's just superstitious, Mildred. He doesn't like working any week with a Friday in it. <laughs> oh, well, still, everything's been done for the big procession. The banners I ordered are ready to go up. Well done, Mildred. They'll stretch right across the mall and say, Great Britain welcomes Chinese friends. But that's no good. They should be written in Chinese. In Chinese? I don't know Chinese, do I? It's perfectly simple. Just right. Great Britain welcomes Chinese flims. <laughs> I see. Oh, oh tiddle Infernal rain. Oh, the weather's gone mad since we went all Fahrenheit. Yeah. <laughs> I say, one, you do look wet. Well, I got caught in that cloudburst. Luckily, I had my Mac, but my trousers were really soaked. Oh, poor Mr. Lennox Brown. You catch your death. I shall not catch my death, Mildred, as I don't intend to sit here in wet trousers. I shall remove them and dry them on the oil stove. Ooh, uh, I'd better revert me eyes. <laughs> you will withdraw, Mildred. Two, kindly join her in the outer office and make sure no one comes in while I'm sitting here in my... <clears throat> nether garments. Is this wise one? There may be a rule against sitting in your office with no trousers on. 
better than risking a chill to. Lord Stilton's memo said we're supposed to take care of ourselves. My trousers will be dry in an hour. Have you ever noticed that dark patch on your ceiling, Mildred? It looks exactly like a footprint. Yeah. I think there were some Australians in here once. <laughs> Look, but I thought you said you had some work to do. Well, I have. All these paper clips to make into a chain. And I still haven't linked in all the O's and P's in Lord Stilton's memo. But somehow I can't concentrate when I'm not in my own office. I must say, Mr. LB's taken a risk sitting in there with no trousers on. I mean, suppose Sir Gregory come in. Well, at least he couldn't get cross with me. I've smartened myself up as instructed. Yeah, we haven't seen that airy green tweed before, have we? <laughs> it's my new suit. I bought it for Coronation Day. Very trendy. Thank you. <laughs> oh. What's that? Mr. Lennox Brown shouting. Oh, perhaps he's opened his pay envelope. Help! Help! Fire! Yeah, fire. Come on, Mildred. Let's see what's wrong. Oh. Oh. What's the matter, one? Pull me trousers. Look, on top of the stove. They're on fire. Oh. Blimey! Where's the fire bucket? Hey, don't come in, Mildred. I'm still in my underwear. Uh, leave it to me. Uh, pass me the fire bucket, Mildred. Stand back, one. Hurry up, two. You're yeah, right. Stand away from the stove. One, two, three. Uh, uh. There wasn't any water in the bucket. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. Just two dead spiders and an old ham roll. <laughs> oh, good grief. My trousers are burnt to a cinder, and it's all your fault. It, my fault? It's your job to see the power bucket's full of water at all times and kept in a prominent position. I'm sorry, one. Do you see what this means? I haven't got any trousers. I'm trapped. Trapped. I have to sit behind my desk till it gets dark. <laughs> and sneak home in my raincoat. Close. Yes, well, what is it, Mildred? What is it? Lord Stilton's on the phone. You're to go and see him at once. Go and see Lord Stilton? But I can't. I haven't got any trousers. Righty ho, sir. I'll tell him. Uh, no! Stop! <laughs> Don't tell him that. If he ever finds out what happened, he'll know I came in late. No. Uh, tell him I'm on my way. Righty ho, sir. Uh, but you can't go and see Lord Stilton in your underpants. For one thing, they're darned at the knees. <laughs> Correct, <laughs> You caused this problem, so I'll have your trousers. You'll have my trousers? Thank you. Oh. Right, come on, come on, get them off. Yeah, but you can't. You won't. It, I refuse. Who is the senior executive in this office, too? Mm, you are. Very well. Right. Take off your trousers and give them to me. I commandeer them, listen, in the national interest. <laughs> but they're green tweed. They look silly with your black jacket. Oh, Lord Stilton may not notice. Now, come on, come on, hand them over. And while I'm gone, have Mildred fill that fire bucket and put it in a prominent place. Well, Lord Stilton, I think everything's lined up for Chinese Friendship Week. Oh, good. Well, I'll, I'll drink to that, Pitkin. I gather you've been chosen to escort this uh, Chinese chap to the tower. Uh, what's his name? Who? This Chinese fellow. That's who? Are you deaf, man? The Chinese delegate. Who is the Chinese delegate? I don't know who. <laughs> well, I don't know him either. Who? In answer to your original question, yes. yes, I have been chosen to meet the Chinese delegate. A great honor, sir. I wouldn't miss it for worlds. Ah, well, I only asked because the PM's giving a little cocktail party for some of us who'll be joining the procession. Uh, you could have come if you weren't meeting the envoy. Oh, uh, a cocktail party. I'm not bothered about meeting this envoy chap. Uh, I think my duty lies at the party. Oh, yes, I, I thought you'd say that, Pitkin. So I took the precaution of sending for your man, uh, Lennox Brown. He can escort this Chinese delegate to the ceremony. Good idea, sir. I, um, I hope you've done something about smartening him up. Oh, indeed. I've spoken to all my staff about their dress and general bearing. I, I think you'll be struck by his appearance. Right. Come. You wish to see me, Lord Stilton? Yeah, yeah. De Lennox Brown. What the devil are you wearing? Black jacket and, and, and hairy green trousers? <laughs> You look like some sort of fungus. <laughs> oh. Uh, well, those trousers, they, they, they don't even fit you, man. I, I can't see your feet. Oh, I assure you, sir, I have them with me. Ah. <laughs> what on earth are you playing at? You're a mess. 
Oh, but it's, it's the latest fashion, you see, Sir Gregory. Oh. Now, the, the undersecretary and I have to be with the PM uh, shortly, Lennox Brown. So you're to collect the Chinese envoy from his embassy at 12.30. Uh, you'll go with him in his official car to the tower. Uh, you'd better take Lamb with you if he's free. Uh, Lamb's in the officer, and I uh, don't think he has much on <laughs> Oh, all right, Mildred. Mr. Lennox Brown says it must go in a prominent place. Better put it by the door there. Yes, sir. Let's hope he gets back soon with your trousers. It's all right. You can open your eyes. I've covered my uh, <coughs> limbs uh, with this piece of bunting we had as a sample. Did you know it had welcome written on it? <laughs> Beggars can't be choosers, Mildred. No, you're quite right. At least it covers your requirements. Mm. <laughs> Two. Great things on a front. Good grief. Who left the blessed fire bucket there? Oh, oh my trousers are so... Oh. But they're my trousers. Oh. What? Well, don't quibble to you. Mildred, leave the room at once. I'll have to take this pair off now. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but you did say to leave the fire bucket in a prominent place. Oh, never mind that. Go next door and ask Mr. Crawley if he has a spare pair of trousers to lend me. We are the home, sir. Two, this is too much. I came back here with this splendid news. Splendid news? You and I, too, listen, yes. have been chosen to meet the Chinese envoy and escort him to the Tower of London. Run where to meet the Chinese envoy? Oh, that's marvellous. We might get presented at court. If we go without our trousers, we'll be in court. <laughs> it's all right, Mum. Hang those green ones out of the window. The sun's shining now. They'll soon dry. Here, I'll take them. Yes, well, it might just work. And if Mr. Crawley can lend me a decent pair, you can have these wretched things back again. There we are. They'll get the full force of the sun there. And if I close the window, that'll hold them in place. Oh. No luck, sir. Mr. Crawley's out. Ah. I looked in his cupboard, but there are no trousers there. Just his dressing gown and a pair of wellies. <laughs> oh, glory me. Oh, and half hot in here. And this awful smell of dumb trousers. Sure. Let's open the window, shall yeah, sure, we? Sure, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> Don't open that window. It... Oh. Oh, too late. You stupid girl. You've dropped the trousers in the street. <laughs> They're my trousers. They're gone. Oh. Quick, Mildred, run downstairs and pick them up. There's a good girl. I can't, sir. They landed on top of a taxi. They're halfway to Trafalgar Square. <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? Entrusted for once with a VIP job, and we can't go because we've not got a single trouser between us. <laughs> There'll be no one to meet the envoy. Sir Gregory will murder us. You can't give up like that, sir, just because you've got no trousers. Look in the petty cash box. No, there aren't any trousers there, Mildred. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, but there's cash, isn't there? If I nip down the shops, I can buy you a couple of suits. By Jove, too. Mildred's right. But the petty cash is for emergencies. Oh, yes, there's 40 pounds here. Yeah, quick, Mildred, take it, will you? My size is average and Mr. Lamb is... Very average. <laughs> well, the nearest shop is Trouserama. My boyfriend gets all his suits there. You don't mind something a bit sharp? Oh, anything, but for heaven's sake, hurry. Oh, we'll never make it, will we? Uh, Twenty-five minutes. Uh, tell you what, Mildred, uh, you won't have time to come back here. We'll meet you in the street. You're going on the street like that? Uh, we go down the fire escape. Nobody will see us. Now, you come to the back door in a taxi. We'll take over the taxi and the suits... And change on the way to the embassy. Huh? Now go, go on. I feel such a fool standing here with no trousers. Oh, don't fuss too. No one can see our legs behind this horse trough. <laughs> ah, that looks like Mildred in a taxi. Well done, Mildred. Come on, we're over here. Over. Mm. Oh, thank heavens. Did you get the suits, Mildred? Well, uh, not quite, Mr. Lamb. Not quite? Well, what do you mean by not quite? Well, it's inflation, you see. What? 50 quid wasn't enough for two suits. Not enough? What have you got in that parcel? Well, look, I told the man to split the suits. He's given me the trousers now, and I'll collect the parcel with the jackets tomorrow. Well, we're all right then. Don't stand there, dithering girl. Give us the parcel. Oh. Right, quick, two into the taxi. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, Chinese Embassy driver and, uh, hurry, please. Dear Gov, hmm? haven't you forgotten something? If you're wondering why we're not wearing trousers, I'm afraid it's an official secret. Two. Sharp even be late. Oh, but just as well. The Chinese are sticklers for etiquette. Hey, lend me a pen knife, will you? I can't undo this knot here. Why don't you just tear the paper and let's get the trousers out? Yes, all right. Back. Wait a minute. That's it. Ah, now then. Hey. Good grief. What is he want? This note inside the parcel. Hmm? It says, Jacket's only here with trousers to be collected tomorrow. <laughs> you mean the shop's made a boo boo? We still haven't got any trousers. Bob, <laughs> pull yourself together, too, and it's no use panicking. And biting the upholstery won't help. <laughs> Do you really think it'll work, one? Well, if it doesn't, we're sunk. Now, let's just go through it again. Now, when we get to the embassy, we stay here in the taxi. Yes. Covering ourselves with this brown paper. Right. Right? Now, let who flung come to us. Yes. Now, whatever happens, don't get out of the cab. Yes. Won't who flung wonder why we're covering ourselves with brown paper? Oh, well, if he does, he'll think it's an old English custom. <laughs> They're very polite, these Chinese. The host is never wrong. Oh, yes, I've heard that. Anyway, with a bit of lucky, he may never notice. Uh, we tell him to sit in front, next to the driver. You mean where the luggage goes? Yes, he'll think that's another old English custom. <laughs> now, the main thing is, we mustn't move from this seat. Yeah. Right, here we are, then. Chinese embassy. 90 pence. Ah, oh, thank you very much, driver. Uh, actually, we're uh, staying with you. Yeah, we're going to pick up a Chinese gentleman, and then we'd like to carry on in your cab. Yes. Yeah. I dare say you would. You're dressed for it, ain't you? Ah, uh, but you won't carry on in my cab, mate. It's me lunch hour. I'm off home. Now, look here. We want to go to the Tower of London. You stand on the pavements with no trousers. They'll likely take you to the Tower of London. This is ridiculous. Oh, is it? Now, listen, you're talking to an ex-army boxing champion. If you're not out of my cab in 30 seconds, I'll stuff your bowler hats down your throat. Don't think you can intimidate us, my man. But, on the other hand, we don't want to keep you from your lunch. Uh, come on, too. He, he wants us to leave. Well, we can't go into the embassy like this. Well, it's better than waiting in the street, too. Now, quick, come on, up the steps. Let's get inside. Oh, help. Oh. Uh, there's a posh-looking Chinese chap coming out. Yes, well, this will be him. Excuse me, please. Are you a British gentleman from Ministry? Uh, yes, indeed, sir. And we are here to meet you, sir. Very difficult for me, you understand. All the British faces look the same. Oh, quite so, yes. Uh, Mr. Hu, uh, you may have noticed, perhaps, that my colleague and I, you see, are not wearing any trousers today. Ah, yes. yes. Very interesting old British custom. No trousers for all these ceremonial occasions. I would, yes, you could put it like that, yes. In China, we have very wise thought from Chairman Mao. He say, when in Loam, do as the Lomans do. Indeed. Yeah, he's, he's taking his trousers. Uh, uh, now, as guest, I am ready to conform to your protocol in every way. There. Now we are all properly dressed for ceremony. <laughs> Come, my official car is waiting to take us to the tower. But we can't go to the ceremony like this. There'll be thousands of people there. TV, cameras, guards of honor, the lot. Oh, it's like a blessed nightmare, too. Oh, best do as he says. Now, pay attention, you men. We of number three company are proud to have been chosen as guard of honor to our distinguished Chinese visitor who today receives the freedom of the city. And I want you to remember this. Our oriental guest may not be familiar with our military traditions, but he is our guest, and it is our duty to make him feel at home. Therefore, we shall conform to his eastern culture, whatever it may be. If he should salute with the left hand, we shall salute with the left hand. Should he arrive without a hat, we shall remove our hats. If there are any peculiarities about his appearance or conduct, we shall adopt them ourselves. <laughs> And here is the news, read by Brian Martin. There were amazing scenes in London today when the Chinese trade delegate, Mr. Hu Flung, received the freedom of the city. <laughs> Observing what is believed to be an old Chinese custom, <laughs> he arrived in black Homburg hat, black jacket, grey tie, 
and pale blue underpants. <laughs> there was some surprise when he mounted the rostrum and showed the Lord Mayor his credentials. <laughs> but in deference to his mode of dress, the Guard of Honour quickly removed their trousers and many government dignitaries followed suit. The party then marched in this manner to Buckingham Palace, led by their trouserless commanding officer, Brigadier Seymour. <laughs> Later today, MP Miss Bertha Hope told the House of Commons that she had been surprised at the sight of the undressed soldiers, but she emphasised that she was not making a complaint. <laughs> Chinese Friendship Week's been a great success. The most talked about event of the year, they're saying. Yes, indeed, Mildred. That freedom ceremony began it with a bang and it never flagged. But I don't understand why Sir Gregory and Lord Stilton are in disgrace. Well, all the top brass took their trousers off, you see, at the ceremony to make Hu Flung feel at home. They were the only two who refused. Oh, Prime Minister was furious. He gave them a piece of his mind standing there in his bright red underpants. <laughs> All's well that ends well, and we've got two smart new suits out of it. Trouser yeah. Armour have nice stuff, don't they? Oh, yes. They were ever so sorry about the mix-up, and they gave me the trousers the moment I handed them Mr. Lamb's cheque. Uh, they're very with it, aren't they? We must be the only ministry men with flared bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this must be Fred that all says General Assistance Department. Mr. Richard Lamb? Yeah, that's me. Oh, we're from Trouser Armour. You paid for those trousers by cheque. That's right. Now, mate, it's all wrong. Your check just bounced. So what? get those trousers off, both of you, or you'll be bounced downstairs. Yeah, but you can't. 